really good Furman team, 34-24. What did you like about the way your guys played? Said it, Rob. Um, you know, it's hard to spot a team 14 points with, with two minutes in the game. Uh, but I thought our guys, once again, uh, have started to prove that the resilience, the overcoming adversity, getting back to the things that we do well, started to show itself. And as the game went on, uh, we just started to, you know, start making plays. Our running game picked up. Uh, our defense started to play better, created turnovers, uh, did a great job on third down conversions again, scored field goal at the end of half and then or end of game, but scored a touchdown and got an interception. So started to play, play much better, uh, indicative of, uh, you know, what we're capable of doing. But uh, again, you give uh, Furman a lot of credit. You know, that's a good, you know, good Southern Conference team, good FCS football team, but happy about the results and, um, you know, looking forward to the next opportunity. First question this afternoon from John O'Connor. Go ahead, John. Hello, Coach London. Thank you, Rob. Uh, Rob. Coach, what sticks out on that offensive line that has allowed both Darius and Bronson to have successful seasons so far? Very productive players. Thank you. No, I appreciate that, John. Obviously, you know, Captain Ryan McKenna, center, All American, you know, Charles Grant. Um, Caden Lynch. We got some guys, you know, we have some guys that have played together for a while. So the consistency of having an offensive line that has been uh, been there for a while and also has blocked for the Bronson Yoders and Malachi Emos and, uh, and Darius Wilson, as you mentioned. So, you know, the, the scheme that we run fits our personality, fits who we are. And I, I would say those guys up front, it all start, you know, being a been an ex D line coach myself, you know, it all starts up front with that old line and D line. And, and uh, I think uh, we've, we've been able to have some really good players here that have, uh, have done well. And, you know, Colby Soresdale playing with the, with the, with Detroit and, and opportunities that may be extended to some of the guys that we have now on this team, it helps as well. So very pleased about the, the, the ground game and, and the players that are committed to, to making this thing work. Thank you. Next question. Thanks, Go ahead, John. Yeah, no? Are you good? All right. Next question from Dave Johnson. Good, good afternoon, Dave. Hey, Rob. Hey, Mike. Um, Dave. I know you were you were pretty uh, high on uh, T.J. McGill back in August, and uh, he's obviously been off to a good start. What, what do you like about him? What's um, what, what's enabled him to step in and, and play like a veteran pretty much right off the bat? Yeah, you know, he's one of those guys we talked about that played, you know, some last year. But – has turned out to be a significant player starter type of thing. That's kind of the story of a lot of teams that have their six year guys, the COVID year guys that have left. And now some of the guys that played, they were the backups. They came in, you know, on your nickel, your dime, or your, your different packages. But um, he's that kind of guy that, uh, you know, has, has demonstrated performance playing in games, but also in practice. And thus far, you know, the, the sample size of games we played in now, he's done a really good job. He's very, Highly aggressive, fo smart football IQ guy, athletic, and so uh, he's done a really good job. We we're going to continue to to rely on him and and his skill set to to help us, uh, you know, as we move for further into the conference schedule. Now, I'm sure that you know, like most coaches, if not all coaches, you like that four game rule that came about recently. Um, did those did those four games he get? Got to see one of the which being at Virginia. Um, did that make a big difference in him in what he was able to gain in that year, a redshirt year? Yeah, it helps because you're allowed to play four games, as you said. And, you know, so there's in game performance. There's, you know, having to study because you might be the next man up. As we all know, you know, injuries happen at any moment. So he stayed vigilant with that. Um, you know, like I said, he's got a, a high football IQ. And, um, and he's highly aggressive when it comes to, you know, uh, as a safety being in the box or knowing what he has to do when he's in three deep or making the calls, getting this lined up. So having his uh, his ability and availability, you know, will help us be a better football team. And, you know, we're excited about his development, you know, as he as he moves on and moves forward. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Mike, your next question for Sean Robertson. Go ahead, Sean. Thanks, Rob. Good afternoon, Mike. How, how are you? Hey, Sean. Hey, I wanted to ask, I know you had a, got a new offensive coordinator this offseason, and I wanted to get your thoughts on how much more comfortable is he 
in calling the plays and scheme wise with the talent he has and how much more comfortable the players are with him. Yeah, Mario Acatelli has done a really good job as the offensive coordinator for us. I think one of the things, you know, when you have consistency in your staff, even though we lost uh, Christian Taylor to the Buffalo Bills, um, having a guy that knows our personnel, he recruited some of these players. He's been around. He knows our staff members. You know, when Ted Hector came in, he'd known Ted before. And so, you know, Perry Jones was probably maybe the, the guy that didn't know, know him, but the philosophy of how you run the ball – with an offensive line coach, which is also now the coordinator, that all fits. So I think the blend of all the coaches on staff offensively, uh, Mario having been here before, coached you know Charles before, it just it just helped with the synergy of what we got going on now. So uh, very very pleased. I, I think this game, you know, close to three hundred yards rushing, you know, averaging seven point one yards per carry. I mean, that's the kind of thing that you want you know, to have a, a mindset about and Like I said, the, the O-line and D-line, critically important. But um, but having Mario and, and what he's done and how we go about doing it with the whole, whole offensive staff has been a positive for us. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Thanks, Sean. You got a follow-up from Dave. Go ahead, Dave. Hey, Mike. Um, if, if I look at the bios right, you and Coach Boykin overlapped a year at BC. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, we, we were there uh, together for a short period of time, and I, I've had a chance to kind of watch his development. You know, typical, you know, an assistant coach that was a receiver coach, that was a running backs coach, that was a special teams coordinator, had been a head coach, and now he is the head coach, you know, here at the, at, the, at Hampton. You know, it's been fun to watch his progress, proud of him. You know, he, he's, he does it the right way, I've known him for a while, and um, but uh, we did spend some time together uh, up there at B.C., Appreciate it. Mike, talk about the Hampton CA opener on Saturday. They're off, certainly off to a, a good three and one start. What has impressed you when you started to look at them on film? Yeah, they, they do another good job. You know, I believe you look statistically right now in the CAA, they're at they're the top of the, you know, rushing and offensive production. The quarterback, uh, Chris Ellis, he does a phenomenal job, very athletic, can throw, can run. There are two running backs. I believe they're, they're some of the high, you know, they're up in the, the categories in terms of rushing yards per game as well. So uh, I know they, they're they committed to, to running the ball. And when you have a quarterback that can hand it off the talented running backs and the quarterback can run it himself, then, uh, you know, that's that, that makes it tough. But uh, they put a, a really good sound offensive scheme on the field defensively, changed a little bit from last year, but uh, they've still got really good guys up front that, uh, that complements their team. And again, the return game in terms of the punt, kickoff return, kickoff coverage teams, they're they're really talented as well. So it'll be, uh, you know, it's a six o'clock game. I believe it'll be a fun game. Uh, I know there'll be a lot of people here, you know, uh, not too far to travel from from each school from there to here or there down to their place. And and so uh, we're looking forward to a great crowd and a great opportunity to represent the 757. I was going to ask you about that. How many of your, uh, obviously, with Hampton joining the conference, you're getting to to see them on a more regular basis at school right down the road. And I'm going to guess that a lot of your players and their players that have backgrounds of playing against each other, how good is it to have this game? Sure. I mean, it's good for college football. It's good for the fan bases on both sides. It's good for that stretch of 64 that, that connects us together. And it's good for our conference, you know, so uh, we're, we're looking forward to it. Um, you know, I know a lot of people, you know, I'm from down this area, you know, from Hampton, Virginia. So um, a lot of our players are recruited in the Tidewater area, across the water and over here on our side. So and like like theirs are as, as well. So, again, it's, uh, you know, it's 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 a good college rivalry game. Uh, the proximity, the people that we know and, um, you know, so I'm looking forward to the game. All right, Mike, thanks so much for the time this afternoon and I look forward to 